smell of your dog's impacted anal glands is one of those smells that dog owners just don't forget. Now, the issue of anal gland problems is a real and common one for a lot of dog owners. And the connection between anal gland issues and sloppy poos are a real problem that dog owners may come up against sometime in the do in your dog's life. So today, let's have a look at the common and also less well-known reasons why those anal glands become a problem for your dog and some ways to help. So stay tuned to learn more in today's short video. Hi there, it's Lyndall Pinch and Canine Naturopath from Canine Vitality. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Feel free to subscribe and don't forget to click on that bell to be notified. If you're a regular, welcome back to the channel. Thank you also for being here. I always appreciate your support. So as we know, anal glands is, um, you know, one of those really common problems that dogs face in, a lot of dogs face in their lifetime. It's estimated that probably around maybe 10% of dogs will have some sort of problem with their anal gland issue, uh, anal glands in their lifetime as an ongoing problem. Now, although anal glands are supposed to empty as your dog passes a poo, this doesn't always happen. And over time, those anal glands can fill up and become inflamed, impacted, and pretty painful. But firstly, let's take a quick look at the function of these tiny little glands. Now, the anal glands' main um, function is to release pheromones. Now, these help your dog communicate with other dogs and of course other animals as well. Now they are located on the lower sides of the anus on your dog's backside and produce a fluid with a scent that identifies your dog. Now this is why you'll see dogs sniffing each other's backsides for that particular scent. Now when your dog passes a poo the anal glands excrete fluid and in a healthy gland this should just be a liquid and this contains in part those pheromones. However, if the glands do become impacted, uh, some symptoms like scooting, dragging the bottom along the ground, licking or biting at the bottom area and difficulty sitting or standing, um, these might be some of the things that you might notice along with that very distinct unpleasant smell. Now when we talk about anal glands, the, the top cause here, of course, with the impaction really comes back to the quality of your dog's poo. Now to fully express the anal glands, the poo needs to be firm and your dog shouldn't be straining to pass it. Now basically you should be able to uh, pick up the poo pretty easily as firm poo. So this firm poo helps to naturally express those glands as it passes through out to the grass. Now the dog's poo, if your dog's poo is really loose, watery or, or even too dry, the glands may not be getting properly expressed and so they can become impacted over time. Now poor quality bowel movements, whether that's through constipation or diarrhea, can produce poos that just, as I said, they're just not sufficient to empty out the anal sac. Now to make sure your dog's bowel is healthy, aside from of course an appropriate diet, supporting healthy levels of uh, things like your di the dog's digestive enzymes and other gastric juices from, uh, from the liver and stomach, are really important here for a healthy um, functioning bowel and of course those anal glands. Now there's also a link to both SIBO which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and yeast infections that may be causing more frequent anal gland problems and this is most likely once again due to a lack of uh, good levels of good bacteria in the gut which uh, help keep the gut at that optimal function. And they also, of course, prevent yeast and bacterial overgrowth. Now, in addition, checking for things like worms and other parasites can be helpful in anal gland dysfunction too. So look at natural worming as an, uh, something to consider too, uh, rather than relying on those chemical worming products. Now, in conjunction with your dog's bowel, the liver and the gallbladder are most closely connected to digestive function as they help with the breakdown of and the absorption too of fat. Now your dog's liver needs to be working really effectively for the digestive system to work properly and therefore 
reduce the toxic load on the body and those anal glands. So herbs like milk thistle, dandelion root and globe artichoke are a really great combination here to consider for liver and gallbladder support to keep the anal glands healthy uh, via that liver connection. So let's have a look at some of the other maybe less well-known reasons. So the second one today is all about stress or anxiety. Now commonly this, you know, this is commonly experienced by a lot of dogs and can really interfere with the function of your dog's gut, which can slow down digestion and the transit of food. Also, if your dog's been under long-term stress, this can actually damage gut flora and reduce the good levels of bacteria, which can further slow down the digestive process. And this, of course, then leads to those anal gland problems. Now, the third uh, reason today is your general immunity of your dog. Now, if your dog's suffering from food allergies, intolerances or sensitivities, this is connected to both over and under functioning immune system. Now, food allergies and intolerances commonly affect your dog's digestive system as well as other areas like the skin and including the anal glands as well, being the end section of that long digestive tract. So addressing this by healing leaky gut, removing offending foods such as common ones like gluten, certain proteins, dairy, etc., uh, reducing inflammation, all of this can help rebuild the immune system and therefore improve the overall digestion and the health of those tiny little anal glands. Now, fourth reason today is neurological based. Now the neurological connection, there's many nutrients that are essential for your dog's nervous system. And this is, uh, you know, it's a complex system. Now one key mineral here is magnesium. It's essential for neurological function. And in particular, the large vagus nerve that actually connects what is known as the gut brain axis. Now, if your dog is lacking in magnesium, this can actually cause a slow peristaltic movement within the bowel. Now, this is that contraction of the intestinal tract uh, that actually helps push food through. Now, if this peristalsis is slow, then the slow passage of, passage of food means that it's gonna take longer to move through the digestive tract leading to um, uh, the creation of constipation, impaired emptying of the anal gland fluid and impaction. Number five, hormones. Now low estrogen levels in your dog can lead to chronic constipation in certain sensitive females, given that most dogs have been desexed. And the level of this hormone automatically drops, of course, after surgery. Now, seeing as many dogs, female, are new to this can pose a problem. Uh, both estrogen and progesterone affect how well your dog's intestines actually work as there are hormone receptors found within the gut. Now, this can lead to constipation once again in some dogs and hence anal gland problems. And in addition, in both male and female dogs, there may be low thyroid function, and this can slow down digestive issue, uh, digestion too, once again, causing that constipation, leading once again to the impaction of the anal glands. Now, helping to support hormones can indirectly affect the digestive system in a positive way and improve the emptying of those anal glands. So as you can see that there are a number of reasons why your dog might be having some recurring or maybe chronic anal gland issues. Now focusing on improving your dog's gut health, feeding a natural raw diet, including raw bones, reducing stress levels, adding in magnesium and other anti-stress nutrients, and supporting hormone levels naturally through the use of things like herbs and other nutrients can really help improve the overall health and function of your dog's anal glands if, if this is something that they're really struggling with and you're not sure of what to do. And if you do have a dog that suffers from anal gland issues or any problem at all and you do need some help, please feel free to reach out to me guys. All well, as, as always, my details are uh, below and I am open for all bookings. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you did, please like it and share it so we can get a little bit more content out there on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having a great day guys. I'm looking forward to catching up with you in another video. Until then, take care. Bye for now.